All right. That has some bass. That was good. All right, y'all. So this is kind of uh, our first session that I, I just a few minutes ago I talk, came and talked and said, like, I want to get us ready for great camp experiences. Uh, this is our first chance to kind of do that together and get to talk together. So uh, really, I hope for, I know I'm the last thing between us and lunch, so lunch will be there at 12. Don't you worry about that. And, and it's titled Trust. Uh, it, it, but what I hope that you get um, out of this series uh, or out of this session is, is really two different things. First of all, is that I hope that you get like helpful leadership principles. So I hope that in everything that we do together, that is transferable, that you can take what you talk about, what you learn, what you work on, what you grow in, and you can use it in your teams, in your families, in your relationships, in all different walks and areas of life. And I really feel like today or this session is something that you can do that with and will be really helpful with. And then I hope that you also feel like you get like a Camp 75 toolkit, that you get something that's very practical and it feels like you're walking around with like a toolbox and you show up to the camp and you, you can unpack that toolbox and you know that you're going to be better at camp as a result of having that toolbox with you. So that's my, my goal for this session and some of our day sessions um, throughout the week. So uh, we're going to go ahead uh, and jump into uh, our session um, called Trust and, and really begin talking about um, what a team is. So um, when you think about a team, there's a definition of team. Jeremy, it's not the next slide, but a couple slides down. Uh, definition of a team. A team is a group of people that come together to achieve a common goal. A group of people that come together to achieve a common goal, right? So that a group of people is more than one, so at least two people, and you guys are headed in the same direction. You guys are driving on the same path. You're moving towards something together, right? That's the definition that most of us understand it as. I'm actually going to give you guys kind of a little bit of a different definition here in a couple of minutes that I, I came across and, and thought was just, just fascinating. But you guys are on a lot of different teams, right? How many of you guys have a job? Your job. Cool. You'll probably get a job in the next two or three years if, if you don't, right? If you're in middle school, uh, going into high school, like you'll probably have your first job. When you have a job, most often you don't work alone and you work on a team there. How many of y'all have done a group project in school? Those are all teams, right? Short-lived. Sometimes we wish that we weren't on those teams, uh, but we, they are teams that we've been in nonetheless. I'd imagine a bunch of you have been on extracurricular teams, whether that's band or choir uh, or sports teams. You're going basketball, football, baseball, uh, the whole nine. You guys are a part of a lot of different teams. And here this week, you are in a Camp 75 team that is a group of people with a common goal going towards the same purpose. So those are what teams are. We are on teams. In fact, you're on more teams than you probably know. Um, but the question that I want us to ask and answer today is, is what makes a great team? What makes a team go above and beyond? What moves us from a good team to a great team or a bad team to a great team? Some of the teams aren't even good. Some of the teams are bad. But how do we go from a good team or whatever it is to a great team? Because I want us to have 63 incredible, great, amazing teams. And so that's the question that I want to answer uh, this week, but what I, or, or today, but uh, what I'd like to do is just with your teams that you're in, is just talk about this for a second. Like, what would you say is like the number one, two, or three things that you think makes a team great? Think about the best sports team you've ever been on. Think about the best like work, in, you know, team environment you've ever had at school, whatever it is. For, for a couple of seconds, talk about this. What makes a great team? And then I'll bring it back in a second. All right, let's bring it back up here. Uh, and let's do that, but I, I'd just love to hear a couple of those, like the, something that stuck out to you that you guys just talked about that makes a great team. Passion. Passion. Passion makes a great team. What you got, bud? Friendship. Friendship. Passion and friendship. What else? Over there in the back. Sorry, lights. I can't see anything, but... Communication. communication. Passion, friendship, communication right here. Respect. Respect. That makes a great team. A great leader. A great leader. That's really important. That's great. Yeah. Understanding each other. Yeah, having empathy with each other. That's great. Back? Trust. Trust. I heard drugs. So I was like, <laughs> sweet. Maybe. Not sure. Trust. Trust. That's good. I'll take two more. Say that again. Engaged. Engaging with one another. Yeah, right here. Teamwork. I love that. Teamwork, passion, friendship, engaging, having a great leader, having empathy. I would agree. All of those are a great team, and I'm also here to convince you that I think trust may be the core ingredient to all of that to make a great team. And so I, I want to um, unpack that together. But all of those are, are great qualities, and all of those are things that I want us to have uh, in our teams and in all the teams, honestly, um, that you guys are a part of. Uh, I want to tell you about one of the teams I was on that um, is just great memories of mine. My high school basketball team was, was a great team for— yeah. 
Our, um, our senior year was the best team that I've ever been a part of uh, in basketball. I did the travel thing, you know, my, my whole life. But uh, senior year, we won 31 games. And it's, getting over that 30 hump is, is hard to do in high school basketball. So we were 31 and 5. Uh, it was a really, really great team. And so I started, I was like thinking about what it was. And I, I do think that trust is a big component of that. Um, this, is, this is us here. Um, and I, I was the only white guy on the team. Just going to put it out there. Uh, this is uh, me, and so we, this, they made me take this picture as my individual picture while they all did like their basketball stuff, um, and it's good. Um, I just kind of, I kind of owned it, um, and I played like a lot, so it was good. Like we, we still out there, and I love these guys, and we, we still talk, and we're still friends. Um, but we had a ton of trust, both on the court and off the court. Um, we were like a jacked up team on the court and off the court. Uh, there was zero, like nobody would look at us and say that we're perfect. There was lots of trouble, lots of mess, lots of things that we had to work through together. But we trusted each other. Like in a practical basketball sense, we knew that we had help side defense every single time. We knew that we could cheat them one direction. They were always going to be there uh, when we needed them to be there. Like we trusted them to do that. Off the court, when we did get in one of those situations that was just messy, we knew that someone wasn't going to like walk out on us. We knew that they were going to be there. And that's something that actually my junior year team had a ton of talent and didn't have that. We didn't have that trust with each other, and we just underperformed as a result of that. And I think mainly because of like our, our off-the-court stuff, um, but we just didn't have that trust. So I think trust goes an incredibly long way. Uh, and, and so as I was thinking of trying to unpack this and looking at teams, I came across this quote, and I was like, dang, that's it. That's the glue between teams and trust. Um, and it's this guy by, si uh, by the name of Simon Sinek, and we've actually talked about his ideas at camp a lot before. Um, he wrote the book Leaders Eat Last, which I think we talked about last year, um, which is the idea that leaders serve. Uh, he, he wrote a book called Start With Why, which is like anytime you're talking about something with someone, you always want to talk about why before you get to the what or the how. He's just a great thinker, great business guy, great leadership guy. Um, and he wrote this on trust, and I think it's so helpful. He said this, a team is not a group of people who work together. Contrary to what I said earlier, a team is a group of people who trust each other. It's a group of people who trust each other. He said it's a group, it's more than one, who have trust with one another. He's like, actually, like, the common goal is important, and usually they're going the same direction, but he would say that trust is the fuel that moves us in the same direction. Like, that's what gets us to where it is that we're going. And I think that this is so important. So he would say, the place that you're in right now, your team will be a team if there's more than one of you and if you guys trust each other. There's a couple more quotes from a guy named Stephen Covey that I want to share with you guys that I just think really builds on this in a really helpful way. Um, Stephen Covey says this. He explains trust. He says, trust is the glue of life. Think about how strong that is. Trust is the glue of life. It's the most essential ingredient in effective communication. It's the foundational principle that holds all relationships. Just think for a second if you, like, agree with that. Like, would you agree that this is the foundational principle that holds all of your relationships is trust? If you ever had someone break your trust, think about what that relationship turned into really fast, right? What's so interesting about trust is it can be built over time. You can put all these small investments, small investments, small investments, and be gone in an instant, right? But would you agree that's the foundational principle that holds our relationships? I would. I would. I think that that's so foundational. And then what I think is so cool is how he, he takes this from what trust is in being the glue of life, and then he has another quote where he's talking about, okay, well, then how do we get there? Like, if trust is so significant, how do we get to a place where I'm sitting with, you know, two people and we're a group, and so if we trust each other, we're a team. Where you're in a place where you're sitting with six, seven, or eight, how do we build that? Like, how, how do we get tangible? How do we get real about that? And, and, and can it be built, or does it just come? Like, would you just say, well, she's my sister, she's my brother. I've been around them for 10, 11, 12, 18 years, so now I trust them, right? Is that what, what trust is? Or or is there something else? And, and Stephen Covey thinks it can be built. Here's what he says. He says, contrary to what most people believe, trust is not some soft, elusive quality that you either have or you don't. Rather, trust is pragmatic, tangible, actionable asset that you can create. He says it's practi practical. It's something that you can build. It's something that you can create. I love that idea to think of like, okay, if we're at ground zero, if you jumped in here yesterday and it was your first time meeting your team or your second or your third, maybe some of you it's your tenth, I don't know, but you're, you're still early in the game, right? Stephen Covey says trust is something you can actually create that you can produce. And I think that's a fascinating idea to say that it doesn't just come over time. So I want to kind of unpack, well, well, how do we actually get to that place? 
And the way I want to do that is, is by listening to a, another lady that I just so respect, um, and her name's Brene Brown, uh, and she just has written tons of books, um, really actually foundational to my own faith and kind of my own identity, a lot of things, um, but it's a little bit of a, a side conversation. Uh, hoping to meet her next month, actually. Uh, my, uh, my girlfriend, uh, Kendall, goes to Texas A&M, and there's a girl in her organization who's best friends with Brene's daughter, and she's now interned twice. So she's like in Brene's like, most recent book and all that, I'm supposed to go like to Houston have lunch with her next month. So I'm really excited. I'm a huge fan of Brene Brown. Um, but uh, she's also, she just, she talks about, writes about identity and vulnerability and authenticity and just getting to like the core of who we are. Um, and, and she again writes, on, she writes on trust and she talks about trust in terms of the people around you. She did a talk and she talked about it like a marble jar. Um, if you were actually, Buck talked about this at, at North Point, if you've ever been on a Sunday morning a couple weeks ago, he, he talked about this. Uh, but I want, to watch, want you to watch this kind of short clip um, from, of where that comes from um, as she talks about trust. And just think in, from the lens of, okay, we have a team. A team is someone who trusts each other. And trust is foundational and it can be created. It can be produced in some way or another. And so if it's going to be produced, well, then what actually grows in? I think she kind of gives you a picture of how you can see it being built over time. So it's just a couple minute clip. Take a look at this and, and then we'll keep going. One day, my daughter, Ellen, came home from school. She was in third grade. And the minute we closed the front door, she literally just started sobbing and slid down the door until she was just kind of a heap of crying on the floor. And of course, I was, it scared me, and I said, oh my, what's wrong, Ellen? What happened? What happened? And she pulled herself together enough to say, I, something really hard happened to me today at school, and I shared it with a couple of my friends during recess. And by the time we got back into the classroom, everyone in my class knew what had happened. And they were laughing and pointing at me and calling me names. And it was so bad, and the kids were being so disruptive, that her teacher even had to take marbles out of this marble jar. And the marble jar in the classroom is a jar where if the kids are making great, be, you know, great choices together, the teacher adds marbles. If they're making not great choices, the teacher takes out marbles. And if the jar gets filled up, there's a celebration about the, for the class. And so she said, it was one of the worst moments of my life. They were laughing and pointing, and Ms. Bauckham, my teacher, kept saying, I'm going to take marbles out, you know, and she didn't know what was happening. And she looked at me, and she, just with this face that is just seared into my mind, and said, I will never trust anyone again. And my first reaction, to be really honest with you, was damn straight. Um, <laughs> You don't tell anybody anything but your mama. Um, yeah, right? That's it. I mean, that was my, that was my like, you, you just tell me. And when you grow up and you go off to school, mama will go too. I'll get a little apartment. Um, and the other thing I was thinking, to be quite honest with you, is I will find out who those kids were. And while I'm not going to beat up a nine-year-old, I know they're mamas. Uh, I, that's, you know, that's the place you go to. And I'm like, how am I going to explain trust to this third grader in front of me? So I took a deep breath, and I said, Ellen, trust is like a marble jar. She said, what do you mean? And I said, you share those hard stories and those hard things that are happening to you with friends who, over time, you filled up their marble jar. They've done thing after thing after thing where you're like, I know I can share this with this person. Does that make sense? And that's what Ellen said. Yes, that makes sense. Hi, YouTuber. Yeah, clap for Brene. She's great. I love that picture because she's speaking to the idea that we can create trust, right? She says it's like a marble jar that you put in. So if you just picture, right, a, a jar that's about half filled with marbles. I think, uh, I, I spent some time thinking about this and I was trying to decide what I believe and here's what I think I believe, um, is that when it comes to trusting someone, I think that there's like a, if we had a marble jar, if, when you first meet someone, there is some initial level of like human trust. Based on what you know about them, if it's a, you know, a completely blank meeting or you've heard some things about them that might be a little higher or lower already, but there's some level like we're going to just give you some trust when you first meet someone, that it's not a complete zero. 
But then when it comes to over time, we can either build that trust up or we can get to complete zero really fast, right? As I said earlier, there's things that happen in your life that have already happened to you or will happen to you that will cause your marble jar with certain people to go to zero or with certain teams to go to zero in an instant. And then there's some things, some actions that you're taking, every conversation, one thing at a time, every time you say hi, every time you encourage someone that's just putting a marble in, putting a marble in, putting a marble in, and it's building up trust over time. I do want to unpack the, the opposite of what takes marbles out of the jar for a couple of minutes, because I think that these are so uh, important. Dave Ramsey is another kind of leadership business guy that I think is uh, just, just a great thinker. And um, he has the, the five enemies of unity and teamwork, um, and, 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 or trust, and, and these are the ones that I, I just feel like will, will sap your team right now. This will start to drain the marble jar that your team has. So whatever it is, I just want you to visualize that with me. Visualize a jar, and then wherever that kind of stack of marbles is, just visualize, and it would go down every time that we do one of these. The first one is just failure to communicate. So every time you, you fail to let someone know and you give someone the important information that, that they should have, failure to communicate is something that would drain the marble jar. It could be as simple as, as I mentioned earlier, like not letting someone know where you're at. If a captain's in here freaking out because they don't know where someone on their team is, right, there's a little bit of trust. That's not like a to zero, but that's just like one marble out of the jar. Like I, I expected them to be here and they didn't meet those expectations, right? We didn't communicate well. And they can be a whole lot bigger than that as well, but I'll talk about that more in number three. Lack of shared purpose is another one. If you're here for a lot of different reasons, right? Um, if you're not here around the same goal, and that's what a lot of this week is trying to do, is, is to unify us around the same goal or same purpose that we're doing. Uh, we're going out to serve our city, again, with that kind of common purpose that we're going to love our city 75 minutes at a time, um, and we're going to share that purpose. When that gets um, separated, uh, that can drain the jar. Uh, but this one, number three, gossip. Might be the biggest of the five here. Um, if you guys have been a part of gossip, uh, meaning that you've been the one gossiping or you've been on the other side of that, you know how instantaneous this trust goes away, right? It is instantaneous. It could be friends, it could be a boyfriend or girlfriend. It can a lot of times be someone that you don't really know. Hey, I heard, and it's something that you have no way to validate if it's true. But I heard from a friend who said they saw and then you're sharing something. You have zero ability to validate whether that was true, but you're talking about it. And then it gets back to that person. And there is, I mean, you might not be all the way to zero, but you're pretty dang close. And if you're on the flip side of that, if you're the one who finds out that the things have been said about you, right, it is instantaneous. And it's not irrecoverable. It can absolutely be restored, but it does take time, and it does set you back, and it is going to take you a lot longer. If you were, you know, six months and some interactions away from being a full marble jar, you're going to be a whole lot further away. It's not impossible. I do want to make that clear, um, but it does set you back a long way. So, so with gossip, I would just say, if they're just not in the room, it's just not worth it. If they're not in the room, then it's, it's not helpful to talk about. Someone on your team, you guys are in a place where you might talk about some real stuff. You guys might talk about over the course of this week just some life. You guys in middle school and high school have experienced so many things. A lot of things you've experienced people shouldn't have to experience. And if you share that with someone on your team and that makes it outside of this, that person's team without permission, the trust is gone like that and you've got to start over. So I just say, let's, let's not do that. Our teams will be so much better if, if we don't gossip. Number four, unresolved disagreements. This is, this is also huge. If, if there's something like a gossip, if, uh, if there's an argument, if there's a fight and it's just left there, that will hurt your trust. This one degrades over time, um, and it actually kind of degrades like exponentially. So it starts to get really, really fast at the end because you start to build up and build up and build up, and it just starts to weigh you down when you have unresolved disagreements with someone that you're trying to trust, right? Whether that's a friend group. Think about your small group. Think about your friends. Think about your closest group of friends. Think about your teams. Um, if you have unresolved disagreements, so this just means like jump into it. Jump into it and, and engage in that conversation. And the last one is unequal responsibility distribution. <laughs> and it's a kind of big way to say like people just aren't pulling their weight. So I think in a very practical sense, right? If, if you've been on a group project, right, and, and three of y'all did a bunch of work, one person did it, and y'all got 100%, you don't trust next time that rolls around that you're going to like all do the work. Like you don't trust it. My whole last year of college, I just graduated from UT a couple of weeks ago. My whole last year of college is basically group projects. Every single class was like four group projects for two semesters in a row. Um, and I had a bunch of this, 
where sometimes it's probably me, but I feel like most of the time it's a couple of other people who are just like trying to ride, and it's just like it sucked. Like it was just like, I, I don't know you, but I certainly don't trust you now um, because we didn't have that. But if you showed up on your team and four of you guys are engaged and one of you guys there who said, I'm here to have the same goal, same purpose, I'm here to, to go and to serve and to love, and then you're not pulling your weight, again, it's like, hey, just take a couple marbles out of the jar and set them to the side. Our, our trust is, is just down a little bit more. So those are five, five enemies. But when we get it right, it's so powerful. When that marble jar is full, if you think about in your life, think about right now in your life, if there's somebody that you would say you have a, a nearly full marble jar with, maybe 100%, but nearly full. I have like three or four in my life that I would say is like 99 to 100% full. That is an incredible feeling to be able to go to those people and say, here's who I am, and I trust you with that. Like, I'm giving you all of it. You could go gossip. You could go tell people. You could take that somewhere it's not supposed to go, but I trust you with that, right? So as we work towards that feeling with our teams, when we get to 60, 70, 80 percent, again, just using the illustration of a marble jar, I know it gets, it's a lot realer than that, um, but it's an incredible feeling, and we can do a lot of cool things. We, this is one of the things that we get to do. When we trust each other, what, unite, what unites us is, is greater than what divides us. Right? When we trust each other, what unites us, the things that bring us together become more powerful. Those rise to the top rather than what divides us. We spend more energy and time thinking about the things that align us rather than thinking about the things that divide us. And when we trust each other, one wins. When we trust each other, being one, like being a team, being unified, going in the same direction, one wins. It beats out all that other stuff, all that other junk uh, that comes when, when we don't have that. A few more things before we, we head out of here at lunch, but, but one of the things I think is so cool about this idea of, of being unified, of being one, of, of trusting each other, of having incredible teamwork, is Jesus actually prayed for this for us. Like, when, the things that Jesus could have prayed for, if you look at the prayers that he said, like, this is, like, one of the one things that he wanted and his desire for us was that we would be unified in one. And I think that you could say that we would trust each other. Look what, what he says in John 17. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am you, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Now I know that spiritually, that people in this room are all over the map, and Jordan identified that, and we're having conversations around that this week. So I'm not making any assumptions with this. But if you would call yourself a believer of Jesus Christ, this is huge. He says that they will believe that we're one, and he says that way the world will believe that you've sent me. He says if we're not unified, if we're not on the same page, if our marble jar is at zero, what's at stake is people not believing that you've sent me. But he says if we get this right, they'll understand. They're unified around me. That is so significant. So bringing this around to, to Camp 75 as you think about your team, again, I think all of that, when you think about trust, think about if you're, if you're a leader on a basketball team, a leader on a cheer team, a leader on a sports team, a leader at school, I think all of that is transferable. Think about that team. Where is your marble jar sit right now? Is it at 10%? Is it at 90%? And do you believe that you can create trust over time by small investments, by being honest, by holding on to something, by being true? And then in terms of our Camp 75 team, what makes a great Camp 75 team? You guys actually hit on, on basically all these. The first one is if we trust each other. If we trust each other, we'll be a great Camp 75 team. We'll love each other here. We'll have fun. It'll be incredible. And we'll create great experiences at Camp 75. If we encourage each other, right? Some of you guys are just most encouraging people in the world. Every time you see you're just like, you're so cool. You're so awesome. You're just affirming each other. But if you encourage each other as a team, you will trust each other more and you'll have a better Camp 75 experience. If we are honest with each other, we don't make excuses if we own things when we make mistakes. If we're honest about our life and, and don't do the half-truth thing, like I'm going to give you like 70%, but I'm, I'm going to put it out there in, in a help, health, healthy and helpful and appropriate way. Um, but I'm going to be honest with you. We'll have a better team. And if we empathize, someone said earlier, if we understand each other, if we empathize with one another, then we will be on the same page. The last thing I want to do is give you five very practical, like, okay, let's take all of this and let's put ourselves on July 15th driving to a camp how am I going to trust my team? Or what are the ways that I could trust, I'm going to sh trust that they're going to show up, and when they do, it's going to put another marble in the jar. I've just got five of them. The first one is trust that your team will show up prepared and on time for every day at camp, ready to provide an irresistible experience for every child, parent, and friend. 
that comes to Camp 75. Right? Trust that the person's going to show up prepared. When you leave here, you're making a commitment that we're going to do one run through, but I'm going to work the next three weeks, and I'm going to make those other camp experiences great. So you are trusting each other. It's not just a captain to team thing. It's a team to team thing. We're trusting each other to show up prepared. And when you show up prepared, it's marbles in the jar. Number two is trust that your team will be honest and communicate clearly with each other. If you're having a hard day, let people know. Like, it's not bad to say that. I'd be like, dude, I'm kind of off today. Today's been hard. Did you know I just, mom just yelled at me at home? You just let them know, right? It's good. Be honest with each other. Communicate clearly. Encourage each other. Trust that your team will be there for you when you're just not sure what to do. If you're in a spot where like, hey, I did prepare, but I'm blanking, or I did prepare, but I'm just in a place where I, I'm, I'm confused, or this is a situation that I wasn't prepared to handle. Like, we didn't get ready for all of it, um, and you asked for help. That, that puts marbles in the jar. Trust that your team will be themselves, not putting on a front or facade to be someone who they're not. That's important, and that starts right now. I think the sooner that you get past the wall, the sooner that you get past the, this is kind of who I am or who I wish I was or what I want to be, but it's not who I really am today, as soon as you get past that and just say, like, we're jacked up, we're, we're, we're jacked up, but we're going to be honest about who we are, you just throw a lot of marbles in the jar. And then finally, trust that your team will not gossip, only speaking to each other directly when there's an issue. If something comes up, like families fight, teams fight, relationships are messy, that is good. Like, that is what relationships are. But when you go directly and it doesn't go from one layer to another layer to another layer to another layer, that's when you just throw marbles in the jar. And again, this one is like a, a turning point. It can sap it in an instant or it can build it up like crazy over time. The, the bottom line of all of that is that your Camp 75 team will be more loving, more fun, more engaging, and more memorable if you trust each other. Y'all can finish putting your binders around or whatever, but I want to tell you one final story that I just think is really cool. Um, I just don't want you to be distracted for it um, as we do it, and then we're just a couple minutes from lunch. To me, this is a, uh, a really cool illustration that just talks about the power of like, synergy and teamwork in a way that is not even human. There's a, uh, I'm not a big like outdoors guy or a big like animals guy. I'd rather be inside with like a laptop in a city, but, um, but I read about this, so I know it's true. Um, but I haven't experimented with it myself. Um, but there's a, uh, an animal called a Belgian plow horse. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have, have seen this thing before, but they are like sturdy, right? Like, like they're thick. Um, I have seen like the buds, <laughs> two C's. I have seen the, the Clydesdales in person, um, like the, the Budweiser Clydesdales, they did like a tour, went to the Express, and I saw that those things are, are massive. These guys are, are big. Um, so one of these guys, you guys might know this, do you know how many pounds it can, it can pull? 8,000. 8,000 pounds, yes. That's what one of these guys on their own, so put an 8,000 trailer behind them, 8,000 pound trailer behind them and, and let them go, and they will pull 8,000 pounds. Two of these guys, that two of these uh, Belgian flat horses that don't know each other um, and didn't grow up together, they're not related or anything like that, but if, if you took a Belgian plow horse from Alaska, because I'm sure that's where they're grown, and you take a Belgian plow horse from Texas, and you have them meet, you know, in California on a ranch, and there you put, you know, another trailer behind them, how many pounds can they then? 16,000 would make sense, right? Like, logically. Like, I love math. Logically, 16,000, you know, one's eight, one's eight, put them together, 16,000. But it's 24,000, right? So they get 50% more just by being together, right? By having that together. And then, if you take a matched pair of Belgian plow horses, and a matched pair is, is horses that have grown up together. They're likely related. Uh, they've been trained together for sure. Uh, the time period is at least a couple of years, but, but potentially a lot longer than that, that they've been together. Two Belgian plow horses go from carrying not 8,000 or 16,000, but they can pull 32,000 pounds together, right? Four times as many as just one by itself with, with just two horses. And like, I know we're not horses, but I think that that principle of synergy and what you can do 
when you are aligned and connected on the same team is absolutely true. That the potential or the ceiling or the cap of our impact together is so much higher and not just like doubled. Like if we just take one team member and another and put them together, it's not like a doubled potential. It's like 4X or 10X or 100X when you guys are aligned and on the same page, when you guys are a matched pair, when you guys' marble jars are full. That's what can happen. And, and when that happens, I really, really do think one wins. I really think that, that being one together wins uh, when we fight for that and when our marble jars are full. So to wrap our time, I just love to pray for that. I love to pray that you guys are, are unified and together and that you're able to take this to Camp 75, um, and then we'll be out of here. Heavenly Father, God, we're so thankful for you and for this week, God. I, I just want to pray for our, these incredible teams. There's 63 teams here in this room, God, and, and my prayer for uh, each and every one of them is that they would be unified. God, the same prayer that you prayed for us is that we would be one, that we would trust one another, that we'd shut down the gossip and the miscommunications and all those things. We'd fight for a full marble jar by encouraging and being honest and empathizing, God, and, and ultimately that we would do that and, and we would follow after you and we'd serve you more. God, we love you and we're thankful for this week. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen.